Hi there, homespun friends. It is Sherry, and it is so good to see you after this long period of time when I haven't been filming. Um, what a blessing it has been. Over the last three weeks, so many of you, I bet 20 of you or more, have written to me in some form to check on how I'm doing and to say that you miss me. And that has so blessed my heart. I want to thank you for thinking about me and missing me because I miss you. And my life in 2018 has been um, so busy with my family that I really have had to put you YouTube on a back burner and I'm still doing the homespun wife over on Facebook doing that every day but YouTube takes a little bit more time to do and is a little bit more involved and so that went by the wayside as things got really out of control so I thought I wanted to just let you guys know what has been going on with me I think one of the last videos that I did I told you about my husband having the flu I mean my husband is never ever sick ever but you know the flu season that we had this past winter everywhere across the United States was rampant and so uh, my husband got sick at the end of February and all through the last part of February and the first of March he was sick with the flu and trying to recover from the flu. He actually missed two weeks of work which is unheard of for him. He, he hardly ever takes a sick day all year long. So this was just concerning and as soon as he started going back to work he noticed that his energy was not that great and he began to have a terrible pain in his side. It started hurting right around the time he was getting over the flu and his right side was, was deep down inside was hurting him a lot. So we started the process of trying to figure out what was going on and for those of you who have had ailments like this you know what that's like I mean you make a doctor's appointment and you may not get in to the doctor's appointment for a week or two and then you go and then they want you to see a specialist and so they make you an appointment and that's another week or two and nothing is quick and this whole time he was hurting and over the period of time they would give him some pain pills to help him they tried several other things that they thought it might be to help him but nothing was really working and so he had x-rays he had ultrasounds he had um, some other testing done and then uh, finally they sent him to a gastroenterologist and he scheduled for a colonoscopy to see you know something could be going on there and um, it was about I guess maybe three or four weeks ago he had the colonoscopy and um, it didn't reveal a whole lot although the uh, the doctor came in and talked to us when we were done and he said that my husband's colon you know normally your colon goes up and loops around and sort of like a, a really smooth uh, bend but he said when uh, my husband's colon goes up it actually takes a really sharp right there's almost a full bend where there should be like a loop and that sometimes it's difficult for the body to process um, you know your digestion through that space and he said it's an anomaly to see this they don't see it very often but the thing that I thought was so funny is he said I have the exact same thing and this was the, the specialist talking to us he said I'm probably a little bit older than you but since I have been your age my body has done the very same thing that yours is doing and I have that problem sometimes too so that was an encouragement to us he gave us some tips on things that we could try if my husband um, continued to have problems but believe it or not his problems have abated for the most part he doesn't have that intense pain anymore and it was such a relief to know that you know nothing serious was going on there at least we don't think it was we couldn't find any other thing so that took a great deal of time because we were you know going from doctor to doctor and test to test during that period of time and then also um, our daughter Natalie and her husband Manny bought their first home and that was a very exciting time but I was spending almost every day with my daughter Natalie driving around town and out in the country trying to look for houses they were ready to buy they had the money to put down they were really ready to get out of their rental property that they were in because they have three children and the property was really really small the house that they were in and they were just bursting at the seams they only had one bathroom and that was sort of a, getting to be a challenge for them um, as their potty training and all this so um, they really wanted to purchase a home and stop renting and so we were spending a lot of days together looking at property and they finally found a house it's not far from where their rental was in a beautiful community um, they had equity in the house right at the beginning the only problem was it just needed work it needed some paint needed new flooring you know how that is when you buy a house the price might be low um, but you know there's some things that have to be done to the house and so one evening uh, about a month ago my husband had been over there helping them to get the house prepared and we had been working outside and it was particularly hot that day and uh, steamy and we were cutting down some trees shrubs and limbs and different kinds of things outside and we had worked for a while we were really really tired neither one of us had had lunch that day and so we were starving by the time we finished it was um, 
about 20 minutes to 8 in the evening and we decided to leave and try to stop on the way home and get a quick bite to eat and um, my husband said since we're going through town let's just stop at the Shelby Cafe that's one of our favorite places they have breakfast 24 hours or well not 24 hours a day they're not open 24 hours a day but you know they have breakfast all day that you can order and they have all kinds of home cooked foods they have specials every day like you know meatloaf and city ham and country ham and um, country style steak and all those things and so um, so we decided to stop there and we we decided to park on the lower street and walk up the hill to the restaurant because the main street is always packed in the evenings in Shelby and um, so as we were walking up the hill I was going to take a right and go up an alley to get to the front of the restaurant and my husband said let's just go the long way around and stay on the sidewalk and when I turned I missed the curb with my foot and fell face first on the concrete I hit my face but my arms are kind of out like this and as I went down I jammed my arms and my face simultaneously on the ground it was very bad it was very bad blood started flowing and my husband said, let me see your mouth, because that was his main concern. My mouth was all busted up, and he thought I'd knock my teeth out, because I fell really hard. But I didn't. I didn't. I, they didn't loosen or anything like that. I was so glad. And um, I had a big scrape on my nose. My glasses were completely torn apart. Um, and I had busted my knee. It took about three days for the bruise to come through, but when it did, it was like black, you know. And the main thing that hurt me the worst was my arms. Oh my goodness, I couldn't even feel my arms all the way down. My arms were, like I had jammed them. And I guess I had just jammed or, um, I don't know what you would call it, messed up. All the tissues and tendons in my arms were um, damaged. So, um, I sat there for about 10 minutes before I could get up, and my husband said, do I need to call an ambulance? I said, no, no, I can get up. I don't think I broke anything. I didn't feel like I had broken anything. It was just, I hurt all over. You know, when you fall, that, that's what happens. And so he helped me. We didn't eat. We didn't go to the restaurant and eat, of course. We got back into the truck. We came home, and he put me in a hot shower, and I couldn't even lift my arms at all. So he had to kind of try to, like, you know, wipe me off and... Uh, put a gown on me and he propped me up in the bed and we started doing the ice and the heat you know alternating about every 15 minutes and um, trying to that put that on my arms because that was what really hurt the worst and um, and so over that week I pretty much stayed home every day and let my face heal up and um, got after I got past that week, my face really started healing enough so that I could get out. And I went and I had to get an eye appointment and get new glasses. And um, and my arms, though, have continued to bother me. And I think the thing it, that it is, and I've talked to a nurse about this that's in our church, is she says that when you, when you jam all those tendons and tissues in your arms, that they bruise really, really badly. And it's like twisting your ankle. I mean, it takes sometimes months to fully get over that. And... Um, so, so that's kind of what I'm going through right now as I continue to recover. Like I say, it's been about a month ago that that bad fall happened to me. And now everywhere we go, my husband holds my hand. I tell him, I said, I feel like a little bitty child. He's like, give me your hand. Give me your hand. Um, I'm like, I'm fine. I can walk. It's just that I turned so quickly to try to follow him that I just, I just totally missed the curb there. And, um, and that can happen to anybody, I guess. But um, it was it was so serious. He said, I don't want anything to happen to you because it scared him to death, too. Um, but anyway, I'm getting over that. I'm starting to do more and more things with my arms. Matter of fact, yesterday evening, I went out and trimmed all of my rose bush bushes out front because they are looking horrible. Something has attacked my rose bushes. And I don't know if it's a beetle or a bug, but all the leaves look eaten. Now, these are supposed to be the disease-resistant variety of roses the newer roses that have come out that are supposed to be resistance you know have resistance to disease and to bugs and things like that so of course bugs can get on anything I do realize that so I cut them all back and I'm gonna to try to treat them I'm trying to read up on how I should do it if I should use seven dust or if there's something else that we should put out there so that when the roses grow back that they'll be healthy some of you who grow roses if you could give me some tips in the comments I would really appreciate that but I just used hand trimmers and just went out and trimmed all those there's about five huge rose bushes out there and I trimmed them down really short and it really taxed my arms but at the same time it felt kind of good to use those muscles and, and tendons again and I trimmed all the shrubs around the other side of my house that have you know tall pieces that are growing up through them and um, and then I came in yesterday evening I was exhausted 
exhausted. My arms were sore and I got in the hot shower. And so I'm having a little, still a little bit of trouble there. Um, one of the things I noticed is when I reach to turn a doorknob, that process of turning or turning a jar lid or a drink, um, I struggle with that. I also struggle with picking things up like this. Like if I pick up a really heavy cup or a really heavy jar, I have to have both hands to do it now because just it runs all the way from like up here in my muscles all the way down to my wrist. I don't I don't know what that is, but I'm sure that it will get better. This reminds me of the time when my children were all young and the twins were babies. We had a two-story house and the only phone in our house was on a wall in the kitchen downstairs. And when it would ring, I would if I was upstairs, I would have to run downstairs to the kitchen to get it. And one day the phone rang and I was trying I was waiting for a call from my mother who lived out of state and so I was trying to hurry to get to the phone and I was running down the steps with the little baby in my arms and I tripped over a toy that one of the boys had left there. They knew not to do that but you know how children are. They they forget sometimes and, um, and I tripped and I twisted my ankle. She was fine. I fell but I I had her up in my arms really tightly, but I twisted my ankle badly. I mean, it swelled so bad. And it took a year, it took a solid year of, of heat on that ankle every day for that thing to get better. And it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, as soon as it got better, it was completely better. But it's amazing how long it can take for those things to heal up. So that happened, and that kept me from filming. There's just been lots of little things that have gone on. But overall, I have been doing very well. And I know a couple of you had asked, I hope you're not depressed. I hope you're not sick with arthritis. And I just thank you so much for thinking about me and knowing me so well. I have really not been depressed, and I have um, not had any trouble with my arthritis, except when I fail, I think the inflammation in my body just amplified. You know how that is. If you have any kind of a fall, your body immediately starts producing the inflammation to help you heal. And once I get inflammation started, it can take weeks and months for me to get it under control. So I've been trying to take some anti-inflammatories on a regular basis and just try to get all that under control. And overall, I'm doing much, much better. So I want to thank you for thinking about me. And I'm going to try to get back with you guys. I have a, a children's book I want to share with you. One of my friends on The Homespun Wife had shared this book with me. She wrote it. She sent me a free copy. I think this was back in February. And here it is June. And I still haven't shared that video with you. I want to do that. I want to talk to you a little bit about Little Rose because my business has really quietened a lot as I've been off YouTube and haven't really promoted my business that much. A lot of people have stopped ordering the clips and we have some beautiful clips and I think June's is the prettiest of all and I'll try to get my phone in here. I don't have one personally yet. I've got to order mine um, and I'll show you what June's clip of the month is. And uh, before I leave you though, I want to share with you uh, one of my scripture writings. Um, I've continued to do scripture writing every day and I know many of you are over there with me on Facebook, scripture writing through the year with the Homespun Wife. And uh, I have really been blessed. Some days, I'm going to admit it, I feel like I'm going through the motions. Do you ever feel that way? I do. Sometimes in life, we just get so overwhelmed with things. We think, I'm just doing this for the sake of doing it, and I don't think I'm getting anything out of it. Well, friends, that's what faithfulness means. When we are faithful, it means doing things even when we don't feel like it. When we're faithful to our husbands and our wives, it means loving them and taking care of them even when we may not feel like it. It means being um, looking after our children even on the days when we're tired and we're exasperated and we don't feel like it. It means going into work and doing our very best. Um, even though it may not be that great, we're giving it all that we can because even though we don't feel like it, we want to be faithful. That's what faithfulness is. And I have found that when I'm faithful, even when I don't feel like it, I still get a blessing out of it. And so um, I want to show you what I've been doing. I have not missed a day. Even when I fail, it's very difficult for me to write. And I noticed that my hands would just shake terribly when I, um, when, after I had fallen. And I would just have to actually hold my hand like this to write. And, and it was hard at times, but that's gotten a lot better now. So I'm really thankful. Um, but this is the, the scripture that I, I want to share with you today. Um, this is it out of Psalm 147, 1 through 4. Let me lift it up and show it to you. I love these little embellishments that um, that I had to put on this page. I think it's really pretty. And I have really gotten into the scrolls now and the frames. I love doing the scrolling frames. To me, they're just so pretty. And this scripture says, Praise the Lord. How good to sing praises to our God. How delightful and how fitting 
The Lord is rebuilding Jerusalem and bringing the exiles back to Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and he bandages their wounds. I love that because just like our bodies can get hurt, our hearts get hurt and our spirits get hurt. And he has the answer for it. He can bandage that up and he can heal us. He counts the stars and he calls them all by name. How I love that. If he has a name for all of the stars and he knows them by name, then how much more so does he know you and me? Friends, I love you. I've missed you. And it's been great to reconnect with you here on Facebook. Let me know how you're doing. I hope that maybe this summer I can get back to some kind of semblance of a routine. Even if it's one video a week, I would really love to be able to do it because I miss you so much. God bless you all. Bye-bye.